Hi there, I'm Michael Odie, Senior Technical Director for Windows IT Pro. And in today's video, we're going to be configuring a two node Windows Server 2012 cluster. The first thing that we need to do is add the failover clustering feature to both of the nodes that are in our cluster. To do that, we use the server manager that you can see here. We're on the server manager dashboard display, which kind of gives us an overview of what's going on in the server. To add the failover clustering feature, First, let's click on the local server so we can go ahead and manage it. And you can see the local server configuration uh, information is here at the top. Let's go ahead and scroll down until we get to the roles and features section of the server manager, which is at the bottom. And here you can see the roles and features pane. Let's take a look at some of the roles and features that are installed. We have the web server role. We have the file and uh, iSCSI services role. We have file and storage services role. We have the graphical server shell feature. Um, the .NET Framework 4.5 and 3.5 are installed, PowerShell 3.0, uh, Hyper-V is installed on this server. This is going to be a virtualization server. The, my two node clusters are going to be set up for live migration and other things. Um, and so you can see that we have a number of roles and features already installed, but we don't have uh, the failover clustering feature installed. So let's go ahead and uh, Install that by using the task drop down and then going to add roles and features. You can see this started the add and roles and fe roles and feature wizard that you can see here. Clicking next will begin uh, the process of adding the feature and it's going to ask us uh, what type of installation we have and we're going to do a role based or features based installation. And then it's going to ask us to select the server. We could be managing multiple servers with this server manager, but we are managing the, the local one here. So let's select the local server and click next. And then it asks us for server roles, but we're not adding a server role. We're adding a feature. So let's go ahead and click the features dialog. And let's scroll through until we find the failover clustering feature. And there it is, failover clustering right in our first pane. Let's go ahead and select it by checking the box right in front of it. And now it tells us uh, all the features that are going to be installed by installing failover clustering. It's going to install the management tools as well as the cluster module for PowerShell. We definitely want these features, so let's say add features. So it's gone ahead and uh, put the check mark under the failover clustering feature. Let's click next for the confirmation window. If confirmation window gives us a chance to go back and make any changes if we want to make them. Everything looks great. We're adding the failover clustering feature along with the management tools and the module for PowerShell. Let's click the install button and the install process will begin. At this point, uh, the installation wizard is going ahead and installing the the failover clustering feature for this node. This node is named uh, WS2012-N1 for our first node. Uh, like with Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2, all the binaries are present on the disk, so we don't have to worry about adding any uh, additional disks or putting anything in in order to complete the feature installation. All we have to do is uh, basically hit the button and uh, then wait for it to finish. It takes it a little bit to copy all the features in and do the configuration. So we'll hold on while it is uh, completing some of its configuration tasks. At this point, uh, the feature installation has completed and it has succeeded. You can see it says up there, installation succeeded on uh, WS2012-N1. So let's go ahead and close this dialog. If we scroll through our roles and features list, we should be able to find uh, the failover cluster feature in here. And there's the failover cluster management tools, failover cluster module for PowerShell, failover clustering tools. So you can see the feature has been successfully added. And now if we want to go ahead and configure the cluster, uh, we would go up to the tools menu here in server manager. We could hit the drop down and go ahead and start the failover clustering manager. And that's how we would begin uh, configuring our cluster when we get ready to start the, con the cluster configuration process. And here you can see the failover clustering manager. Uh, in part two of this, we'll go ahead and uh, configure our cluster. Before we create the cluster, it's a good idea to validate our cluster configuration. 
And you can do that by run, by clicking the validate configuration link here that you see on the failover cluster manager. This will run the validated configuration wizard. This wizard will check the hardware and the software settings of all your cluster nodes to make sure that everything is compatible with failover clustering. The first thing we do is enter the node names that we're going to check. So we're going to check WS2012N1 and WS2012-N2. Those are the two nodes that are going to comprise this cluster. So we've gone ahead and added those to our validate uh, configuration wizard screen. Clicking next will ask us which test options we want to run. We can select to run just given tests or we can run all the tests. Certainly in your first run, uh, it's a good idea to run all of the tests and make sure that um, everything is fine. Later on, if you're trying to narrow in on a specific issue, you can select certain tests. But in the beginning, it's a good idea to run all of the tests. Next, the wizard will show us a confirmation screen, which is basically going to tell us which tests the validated configuration wizard is going to run. And you can see that it's processing for a second. And here is the servers that it's going to test. And then through this dialog, we see a list of all the different tests that it's going to run. Number of Hyper-V tests, looking at the, the storage file system, looking at the software levels of the systems, a lot of different tests that it's going to run. Clicking Next, we'll go ahead and start the testing process. Now, the, as you might guess, the validate tests take a little while to run because it's basically going to run all these different tests that you see listed here in the window. So I'm going to go ahead and let the tests run, and I will check back in on this in a little bit. Uh, here you can see the validate tests have been running for about five minutes or so, and they're just about finished. And now they have finished. And so at this point, the validated configuration wizard is going ahead and creating a report. So let's scroll through. And it says the testing has completed successfully, but there were a couple warnings. So as we scroll through, we can see all the various tests that it did. One of the warnings there, we see, well, it's a matching processor warning. So you can see that uh, the processors here weren't exactly identical, but then they don't really have to be. Uh, if we want to dig into more information, we can click this View Report button, and an HTML copy of the report will be generated that we can, uh, that we can uh, look through. And this will have a lot more details as to what the actual uh, errors were, and uh, will give us some, um, some clues about what we should do to correct them as well. So, for instance, if we go into this, uh, the Hyper-V configuration thing here, we can see we had a couple warnings in storage and system configuration. So, like, the Hyper-V configuration, that's the one we looked at earlier. And if we click on that, you'll see here, validate matching processors. Clicking on that again will give us a little more information about it. And you can see that these are just warnings. They won't stop us from going ahead and creating the cluster. Uh, the processor version is not exactly the same. One is a Model 15 on one, Model 23 on the other, but still they're close enough that, um, that it won't stop live migration from happening. And so this cluster will, is fine. And this is just a, just a warning that we can continue. An example of one of the others might be, let's take a look at the system configuration warning. And again here it says validate software update levels. So it looks like one of the nodes is missing a couple updates. So it says software missing on uh, one of the nodes. So I should probably run Windows Update to get them together before I go ahead and, uh, and actually go ahead and create the cluster. But all in all, this won't stop us from creating the cluster. And the configuration or the validated configuration wizard says we can go ahead. So the next step will be to go ahead and create the cluster. Now that we've gone ahead and validated the configuration, let's go ahead and create the cluster. So to do that, we're going to click the Create Cluster link, and that is going to fire off the Create Cluster wizard that we can see here. Let's click through the welcome screen. Now let's go ahead and put in the two nodes that are going to comprise our cluster, WS2012N1 and WS2012N2. So those are the two nodes that are going to be in our cluster. So we've gone ahead and added those. Now, 
uh, the Clarate Cluster Wizard is asking us for a cluster name. This is the name that the cluster is going to be known by on the network, so it has to be a unique name. Uh, let's call it WS2012-CL01. And uh, then it wants us to um, put in the cluster address. The cluster, this could be dynamically assigned, but we don't want it to be. Typically, it's better to have your servers statically assigned, I found. So we're going to give this one an address of 192, 198, 100, 200. And uh, it's going to go ahead and make sure there are no other network systems with that name or address. And then it's going to ask us, is this the name and address I really want to use on the confirmation screen? And it is, so we're going to go ahead and click Next. And at this point, uh, the Create Cluster Wizard is actually going out and creating the cluster. So it's querying the two nodes, it's creating the new cluster with the name of WS2012CL1. Uh, uh, and um, this is going to take it just a few minutes while it creates the cluster resources and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, check back in when it's just about finished. At this point, the cluster went ahead and finished. And uh, it only took it a couple minutes. So uh, we can see that we have successfully created the cluster. And the cluster's name is the WS. And here's our new cluster, uh, WS2012CL01. And uh, let's expand the cluster and see what we can see in there. And we can see that there's roles. There's none configured on this server yet. And I'll talk a little bit about roles in a second. We can see our two cluster nodes, uh, WS2012N1 uh, and N2. And we can see the storage that's being used in the cluster and the networks. Uh, one of the first things to check, though, when you create a new cluster, is to see that your quorum is set up the way that you want it to be. A lot of times the wizard creates the quorum in places you don't want it to, and you might have a specific disk um, that you have set aside for the quorum, as I did in this case. So let's take a look here, and I wanted my quorum on cluster disk 4, which is sized at 520 megabytes, just just a little bit bigger than the quorum's minimum size of 512 meg. So um, just to make sure that it fits in there. So that's where I wanted my quorum and that's where the quorum is. If I wanted the quorum to be in another on another node, I would right click the cluster name and then I would go down to the more actions uh, menu option here and then I would go over to configure quorum, cluster quorum settings and this would allow me to um, to move the cluster around this would start a wizard that actually goes through and helps you to configure the quorum in my case like for instance you would take this use typical settings if you like added nodes to your cluster and it might change the way the quorum was being used or in this case I would probably go down here and do this if I wanted to add or move the where the cluster quorum was at but in my case everything is fine so I'm not going to do that um, however one of the things this cluster is being used for is that both of these nodes the WS2012 N1 and N2 are Hyper-V nodes. So I'm using this this cluster to support the two Hyper-V servers. So I want to have a live migration uh, enabled between the two and I want to be using cluster shared volumes. One of the important changes with Windows Server 2012 is that cluster shared volumes are enabled by default. Before you used to have to actually enable them at the cluster level. Now it is enabled by default. And so I want to change this cluster disk 3 over here to support cluster shared volumes. You can see that that's its volume name, so that's what I wanted to do with it. And so in order to do that, <clears throat> I would highlight that and then I would select the add to cluster shared volumes option over here in, um, in the actions pane. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it worked very quickly. It said, uh, uh, changing the drive and now it says cluster shared volume so you can see it's no longer just available storage let's go ahead and do that with uh, cluster disk 1 as well we're going to add that one to a cluster shared volume so now I have two cluster shared volumes that are configured in the cluster and that's where I will assign uh, the different Hyper-V uh, systems that I want to use okay now quickly uh, quick look at roles 
With roles, this server is just created, or this cluster is just created, so there are no roles. But what I want to do is add a couple of um, high availability virtual machines. I could create a new virtual machine with this link, and this would allow me to create a new virtual machine or a new VHD, and it would basically fire off the same um, create a virtual machine wizard that you would see out of the Hyper-V manager. But here we're going to go ahead and configure a role. So let's configure a role for our um, for our cluster here and what we want is to configure it for high availability virtual machines. So I've selected the virtual machine option here and then it says well what virtual machines do you want to be highly available and for now let's just select um, maybe that one and um, well that's good for right now that will go ahead and move this virtual machine over to our cluster shared volume and then we can say okay and I can come back and run this again at any time to go ahead and add other virtual machines if I want as well and so it says we're ready to configure it it tells us the virtual machine we're configuring and at this point it's going ahead and adding the virtual machine uh, to our virtual machine role and uh, we now have a highly available virtual machine and I would go ahead and do that for all the other VMs that I wanted to include um, in this cluster with high availability um, let's go ahead and have a quick look over here at what cluster shared volumes do too when you create a cluster shared volume um, it creates this new uh, cluster storage link that we see over here in the C so this is a mount point for the two volumes that I created to volume one and there are a few virtual machines that are stored out there already and volume two so you can see that this is where the the CSV storage mount point is actually seen by the different nodes in my cluster Other, other articles and videos in this series will build on this cluster by showing you how to take this cluster and implement live migration and how to run live migration with your virtual machines and also to uh, build continuously available file shares and storage. That's it for this uh, video. Thank you for watching.